Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. The start of the Scott Robertson era has officially begun with the first ever All Black squad announced by the new head coach and a new captain. Scott Barrett will lead New Zealand in the new era, sparking a bit of outrage over the fact that it was not uh, already severe. Quite a few uncapped players named in the squad as well as a massive um, omission in the form of no Hoskins Tutu, who um, was absolutely sublime in the Super Rugby. And all of a sudden, people talking about, is there always going to be this sort of bias towards Crusaders players, for example, that uh, Razor might have, given the fact that he has worked with so many of these players over the years, uh, obviously was so successful as the coach of the Crusaders, where he used to win the Super Rugby uh, finals uh, for fun, basically. Um, so it's an interesting squad. It's a very good squad and some very talented players, but there's definitely a lot of, uh, of, of outrage over certain decisions in the squad itself. Before we look at the squad, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so let's start with the big one. Scott Barrett as captain. A very, very interesting decision. And uh, as I wouldn't say expected, but um, not a particularly popular decision amongst the fans. And it's an interesting one. Look, he's 30 years old. So uh, from, a, from an age point of view, you know, he will comfortably make the next World Cup. Um, there is also definitely a, a new generation of, of locks coming through now. Um, you know, Sam Whitelock having officially uh, retired over the weekend. Uh, Brody Vitalik, for example, moving out. So it is a bit of a new generation. Uh, Scott Barrett very much leading that, I think. But the big question is, why not Artie Sevilla? You know, 81 caps is the vice captain, so clearly viewed as a leader. Um, you know, and what does he have to do uh, to, to get the captaincy? Now, some people have gone as far as to say it's a bit of tribalism in that uh, Artie Sevilla uh, playing for the Hurricanes, for example, uh, whereas Scott Barrett being from uh, the, the Crusaders, which is why, you know, Scott Robertson's gone with him. There's definitely a point, it's definitely played a role. I think that's, there's no doubt about that. And it's, I want to say it's not only normal, but it is pretty normal, to be honest, for coaches to back players they know. You know, he's new in the, the, the All Black environment, for example. He's a new coach. He needs to try and get the best out of his players. And he's going to go and do that and try and win the, the loyalty of his players, get the players on his side by going to players that... Um, that he uh, that, that he trusts and and that and that would back him for example and uh, Scott Barrett is one of those players you know he's played under Scott Robertson for for a number of years um, it's an interesting one isn't it you know I think is Oli Sevilla a captain I think he is uh, I think he's very much a, a heart and sleeve type of player there's also that kind of rhetoric where you know don't just necessarily make your best player the captain so for example I saw Lima Superwaga uh, tweeting saying well you know how can he not be the captain he's the best player in the world the best player in the world does not make the best captain. You know, sometimes it does, you know, and there's definitely uh, examples over the years where the best players can also make the best captains. But uh, sometimes, you know, you want your, your best player to not have to worry about the captaincy and just go out and be the best player in the world. So there could be a certain amount of that. Uh, one thing I will say about Scott Barrett is that he likes to toe the line. So he makes sense as an All Blacks captain. You know, he's somebody who's often um, right on the edge, you know, has had red cards before, has had yellow cards before, he has a bit of a shit house, to be perfectly honest, has had those moments where he was shushing people on the on the ground and stuff like that. So he's got that side to him, which a lot of New Zealand captains sometimes have had. I mean, Richard McCaw obviously, obviously towed the line, um, wasn't quite a shit house like the former Scott Barrett, but um, there is definitely been, certainly kind of been that sort of side to a lot of, of, of all black captains. So at the end of the day, he's, he's got 69 caps to his name. He's not like he's inexperienced. Um, and I think he is quite well respected in the, the side itself. Let's look at the squad though, shall we? Now, in the, in the hookers department, uh, there is a new name, no Dan Coles. Um, and so George Bell, the uncapped George Bell from the Crusaders gets a call up alongside Cody Taylor and Asafu Amur, uh, who's sort of back in, in the mix there. Um, no, um, no Dan Coles, I think it's going to be a big miss, uh, to be perfectly honest. And uh, yeah, I think it's very interesting to see the sort of the makeup um, of... The, the New Zealand pack moving forward. I uh, know some of Sonny Takawawa as well. Um, I'm pretty sure I think he's injured, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and um, so we'll wait to go see uh, exactly what's going to, what, what eventually what will happen over there. Um, if we look at uh, the props, uh, Ethan De Groot, uh, Tolo, Max Fetch, and you are all sort of back there. As an offer to Tuonga Farsi and Tomasi Williams. Not too many surprises. There is a uncapped Basil Tosi from the Hurricanes. Um, so he's the new name there. Not too much, too many surprises there. Much the same in the locks, to be honest. Scott Barrett, Tupo via Patrick Tupolato. Um, 
Scott Barrett, the, the most experienced there by, by quite a long way, but none of those players particularly new to international rugby. Loose forwards, Ethan Blackadder, could this now be the opportunity for him to really start to take a claim? Same as Sam Penny Finau, who's only got one cap to his name. Luke Jacobson, Dalton Papali'i, and then Artie Sevilla is joined by the uncapped Wallace Satiti, the uh, Chiefs uh, 21 uh, year old, who is an uh, exciting young player. And if you look at that that loose that loose trio, very interesting to see you know who uh, Scott uh, I mean Scott Robertson really does back. A lot of people have been waiting to see sort of Ethan Blackadder at his best in uh, in in an all black shirt. Uh, if you go to the backs, an injury to Cam Roygaard as what has ruled him out. As a result, Cortez Matima gets a, a uh, an opportunity. TJ Perinara is in the mix as is Finley Christie. So uh, lots of experience. TJ Perinara, eighty caps. It is the new era without. Aaron Smith. So Baron and I are back in the mix. And I think about time, he's, we all know the quality he brings. Finley Christie, who is not young, by the way. Um, opportunity really now to to make his mark. Um, I think Cam Roygaard's going to just, when he makes his fit, he'll move straight back into that. Obviously, a no a Richie Mwanga. So your fly half options are Bowden Barrett and Damian McKenzie. So plenty of experience between those two players. 29 years old, Damian McKenzie. Bowden Barrett, 33, back in the mix. In the midfield, they've got the options in Jordy Barrett, who's also... Uh, co-vice captain, by the way, Rico Awani, Antonella Brown, and in the uncapped, Billy Proctor from the Hurricanes gets an opportunity. The outside backs are Caleb Clark, um, Imoni Narawa, who's uh, had just had a well, single cap, uh, Stephen Perifita, who's got three caps, Sebi Reese, um, typical isn't it, and Mark Talea. Uh, so the, the players who the injury, um, as I mentioned, Sam Asoni, Takawa, Camaroy got no Will Jordan and no Sam Kane. Um, so interesting that, for example, that Sam Kane is even on the list there. Um, so it, it is interesting to, to see that, uh, for example, the likes of uh, the two Barretts and the Leisha Brawl, but not Bowden, which is an interesting one. Um, I always felt like Bowden Barrett is, is, is somebody who, for me, would be a decent captain. But uh, so there's also some key players are missing, um, but generally a very strong squad. What do you make of it? What is a potential all Black 15, you know, what do we need to worry about? As a Springbok fan, looking at the squad, who makes me nervous? Now, most of them, obviously, the back line. Obviously, an RDC VM makes me nervous. Um, if if I see Ethan Blackout playing uh, at his best, I think that makes me a bit nervous. Uh, I don't, still don't look at the front row and get particularly nervous. You know, I think Ethan DeGroote's a, a good young player. Fletcher Newell is also quite young. But, um, I, you know, for example, I just think that they um, are, a, are, are a packed or front row that needs to improve a lot. But uh, plenty of players in and around those, the, the back line, you know, the locks of Mark Talaire, you all know how talented he is. No Will Jordan will be a big miss. Um, I think no Cam Roygaard as well will be a big miss. But uh, yeah, which players are you really excited to see? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Stephen, and I'll chat to you soon.